Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be taking you through my favourite FPV setup for 2020. This is just my opinion but I like to think that I've tried the very best and what I believe to be the very worst of products so hopefully you can get something out of that but it is opinion based. Anyways, before I do that, I just want to show you my Zen room that I am sitting in where I come in if I want to relax because it is one of my favorite places. I've just got back from flying and I've emptied my flight backpack so you can see what is in it. So right in front of me, I've got a nice flat screen TV and I'm actually sitting on a double sofa which is actually a bed and that's really nice. Over here we have got the keyboard which is linked up via MIDI to the computer which isn't finished yet. This is meant to have a Vox amplifier cover on it which has started to be made there. You can see the Vox logo so that's a work in progress. We've got a computer here. I need to get a bigger monitor to do my music stuff so Patreon link in the below for a bigger monitor but no, seriously, I've got everything set up here, so I've got my Roland drum kit here. It's a TD-20 mixed with a TD-8. We have got the Pearl Demon Driver double bass pedal, and all that is hooked up to MIDI. So this computer back here as well, I'm running Cubase Elements 10 on there, and I have got Amplitude, Guitar Rig, and I've got Superior Drummer for the drums, Easy Drummer, any plugin you can think of. And I've also, down here, got an MV50 amp, which is an AC30 amp emulator. And that goes to this little Vox cab here. And that is for my signature Brian May guitar here. As you will see, complete exact copy. No serial number on the back. Got a Focusrite Sapphire here and some Beats headphones and that's about it. But look what we've got over here. This is all my FPV kit that I have emptied. So I'm going to take you through my analog setup first. This is what I take with me just for having fun and it's sort of what I have separated out as my favorite flying gear from all of the stuff that I have tried over the years. So I'm going to start with analog because, you know, you just have to, don't you? That's where we all started and where a lot of us are still flying. So my analog setup is all here for my main analog freestyle model. It's got to be the iFlight Nazgul 5. It's the V1, but they have come out with a V2 now, or are coming out with a V2, but this one is just absolutely superb. Only ever broken one arm, smashing into the cooling towers at a very high rate, but since then it's been gold, and most of the follow footage you've ever seen on my channel been done with this quad, and it's holding a GoPro Hero 7, which I fly at 2.7K60 with hyper smooth on and also super view. And then the transmitter, it has got to be the Radio Master TX16S. I tried the Jumper T18 and also the original Jumper Radio and you cannot beat the quality of this. This is the transmitter to get at the moment, I would say, unless you do crossfire only. In that case, I would recommend the Tango 2. I actually do use the Tango 2, but I don't have it in my backpack. I actually use it for a simulator because it's nice and small, and I do have one analog quad that I fly. It is a KISS Alien, the V2, and I use the Tango 2 with that. And sometimes I stick Crossfire in the back of here as well. The only problem with Crossfire on this guy is that it does drain the battery quite quick but yeah if I was to recommend a transmitter in 2020 it would be the Radio Master TX16 the quality is just so much 
better. Even had one of the sticks come loose on the T18 and just the overall quality of the switches and when you take it apart is better. It's not just because and DRC is inscribed on them, but that just shows you the extra mile that these guys will go to when it comes to a new radio. In fact, I believe they have got some upgrades coming out for this guy. There's going to be a carbon fiber case and I think some anodized buttons as well. So really looking forward to those updates. And then when it comes to the goggles, it has to be the Fat Shark HDO 2s. I think it's really difficult at the moment when it comes to analog because we've got this digital stuff that has thrown a spanner in the works. I think if I was to go analog now, I would go as cheap as possible, maybe even box goggles, unless you are waiting for the bite frost system to come out or the shark bite, what they are calling it now. If you've got these HDO 2s then, it might be worth holding on to see if it can compete with DJI. It does definitely seem to be some advantages there. But when it comes to analog, can't beat the HDO2s. And what I love about these now is that you can switch from 4x3 aspect ratio to 16x9 natively supports rapid fire. When it comes to the antennas, it can only be the Menace antenna and that gets right above your head, so no problems with reception. Quite a lot of the times with the small antennas, your head gets in the way if you fly behind you. And then for the patch antenna, it has to be the Menace Pico patch antenna. And the module is the Rapid Fire module and I can't see how you can beat that. The reception is just fantastic. I hear the TBS Fusion is just as good. And then for the battery, I'm using this Furious FPV case here. I actually need to replace it because it's failed. It's been great, but I use these things a lot. And just recently, the actual connector has worn out, which I think is interesting because I never disconnect it from here. I use the button that this added. You know, everybody talks about, oh, we need a power button, and there's a power button underneath here if you want it. But funnily enough, this connector here has broken despite me never disconnecting it and if I give it a knock there it disconnects so I'm gonna have to revert back to the Fat Shark battery. That is the analog stuff. I'll just go on to the batteries because it's the same for the analog and the HD setup. I'm running 6S here so the batteries are either Tattoo R line 1050s and I'm using GMB as well. I've got a 1250 for slightly longer flight times but makes the quad a little bit heavier. I've got an 1100 here. I really like that one. That's a, a nice sort of in the middle battery and I'm using that on both of my analog and HD quads. So onto the HD quad and of course it could be nothing else other than the Nazgul 5 HD, so basically the HD version of this one. And as I say, they are bringing out an analog version of this. Not sure I'm gonna get to check that out because I think they have got a new version of the Skidora, is that how you say it? I'm not sure, it's the only one I haven't checked out other than the three inch. I would love to check out the three inch iFlight because I'm really struggling to get a decent HD 3 inch model that I like. So far the Coppice Mini didn't quite do it and also the HLRC set to 132. They have both got a bit of jello on the camera but looking at how iFlight have mounted the camera on the DC3 it looks really good in carbon so that looks like a winner for the 3 inch. But anyways of course this is the Nazgul 5 HD. I've already done a review on this. It's absolutely superb. You know it comes in as a budget quad but these motors here, the Zing E motors, absolutely superb. Get it in 6S so that you don't destroy your batteries because it's very heavy on the amps. And this guy, man, I have been so impressed with this. This is the Insta360 1R and I was a little bit unsure about it when I first tried it, but it is absolutely superb for the money. And I think there's some money off on this at the moment. You could definitely have it as a GoPro substitute. I think a GoPro 8 is slightly better for what it does with HyperSmooth and stuff like that. But this guy is very close with its flow state stabilization and with it having this twin system, I'm a big sucker for this 360 
option here. It just clips in, everything's modular, and the case is brilliant as well. It matches perfect with these iFlight quads because they have this GoPro attachment at the bottom there. So this case is just beautiful. Just got a button on it there, which flicks this forward. If I can press it whilst holding the camera at the same time, a little bit difficult, there we go. And then that just pops out. I just love how modular all of this is. 4K 60 FPS with the flow state stabilization and it looks just like a GoPro, similar weight to a GoPro, not quite as wide a field of view, not quite as good of a microphone. I'm gonna be doing a full review on this guy. Fingers crossed, hopefully soon, with the 360 and with the normal attachment, so it's like a GoPro, and also going through some of the different features that are important to me. So that is the quad with the DJI Vista on there. Absolutely superb, been flying that every single day. I absolutely love it. Now, when it comes to the transmitter for the HD quad, this really surprised me. I did not expect to be using this at all. This is the DJI transmitter. And first of all, I looked at this and thought, right, it's running on 5.8 gigahertz, so it's not gonna have great penetration compared to 2.4. That's completely wrong because they're doing some special stuff in there. I don't know what it is. There's no programming on here, really. You do it through the goggles and in Betaflight, but it is just so convenient and such a nice controller. The sticks feel superb, just dead simple, and you no longer need a receiver. That is all I need. It binds directly to a Vista, binds directly to an air unit. I've got my Mode 1 here. I've got similar switches to my Radio Master, which is over here, and just absolutely superb. This has proved to be fantastic and haven't had any problems. In fact, you get further range on this guy than you do the video. When you look through the goggles, you get two bars one for the controller and one for the video. This one always has higher bars than this one. So yeah, no complaints with this whatsoever. Just very neat, very expensive, but you know, from what I have tried, the best setup when it comes to DJI, if you have got the money. Of course, if you already have a Tyrannus or a Radio Master, then you might want to use FR Sky or something like Crossfire, but this, is the optimum setup for me and you can bind as many models to this as you want absolutely brilliant no good for planes though if you're a plane guy and a quad guy there's no trims might be difficult for you because everything's done sort of in beta flight then the goggles are the DJI goggles of course I've shown these on the channel before I have got the British Drone Industries Digi adapter on here but honestly I don't really use it for analog I use the Fat Sharks because they're just better for analog. If you are using GPS, then you can't record the GPS on the screen. Uh, it's there, it's very useful info, but once it's gone, it's gone. And if your quad's gone down, that's it kind of thing. You can't look back at your recording. Something that DJI really need to fix, whereas with analog, you can carry on doing all of that stuff. So, just a couple of other things. I'm still using my UR UAV backpack. It's a little bit worn, it's got holes in it. I could do with another one if anybody's got any suggestions. My field charger, I'm using an ISDT SC608. It's really battered, but it does the job. And I use an old, very puffy, multi-star 10 amp 4S LiPo. And I just charge that and that can get me another charge of these LiPos over here. And for the camera, the other camera for my HD system, this is the GoPro 8. I actually don't like the 8 as much as the 7. That might surprise some people. I don't think the dynamic range is quite as good as the Hero 7. It's bigger, it weighs more, and of course, we don't have that replaceable lens. Just got some other tools here. So I've got a two millimeter Trax, I think is the make. Hex driver, good quality, then 1.5 mil for the micros. Then I have got my prop remover 
there and this is a 1300 milliamp 4S and that powers up these goggles here and that just goes in my pocket. That is my 2020 setup and that's not to say that anything that you have is any inferior. It's just that I've tried all of the products and out of all of them, this is my pick of the lot. That's not to say that there's any problem with the Skyzone goggles. They just didn't fit my face quite as nice as these but the OLED Skyzone is definitely a good choice. The Ionways, if you can still get them, a good choice. The thing I like about Fat Shark is that you can send them back at any point if there is a problem and they will replace all of the parts and to me I've had to do that a couple of times with all of the Fat Sharks that I've owned and they have honored that every single time even when I've used an email address that has nothing to do with me whatsoever they just take it back and get it sorted. But there you go, that is my 2020 rig. I'll put links in the video description to as much of this stuff as I can because this is the stuff that I can thoroughly recommend without any issues. I hope you enjoyed this video and as always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.